Now let's talk about sharing beyond the single server. Right, yeah, because you can share with colleagues and, and family on your own server. But what if there's a partner company that your company works with and they're also running their own Nextcloud? That's where Federation comes in. There are about half a million Nextcloud servers on the web, like 500,000. And within each of them, sharing is so easy. Just enter the name of another user on the server. So imagine you're a federal MP at the Department of Interior and there's another MP at the Department of Education that you want to collaborate with. Now, if both departments are running their own Nextcloud server, do you now need an account on both? No, you don't. That's exactly the point. You can share to use on a different server using Federated Cloud ID. You can find it in your sharing settings. It's like an email address, username, the at sign, and the address of your Nextcloud server. If you enter my Federated Cloud ID in your share dialog, I get notified and of the new share and you can accept it. So now I have to accept all these federated shares always? Yeah, just like um, enable the normal shares. In this release, however, we also made it possible that you can auto accept federated shares. I think this makes sense between trusted servers. Yeah, absolutely. So this will make it easier for me to share cat or dog memes between my private server and work. Check. So that was sharing and collaboration with your colleagues. What else did we do for this? Well, release? a ton of other stuff. Let's jump right in. Let's start with onboarding. That's the beginning after all. So there was a community member who wanted to make it possible for onboarding emails to be sent from the command line interface. This would allow them, of course, to automate this. And for a big instance, if you can automate sending these emails, control this from the command line, that can be quite helpful. Our community contributes hundreds of such small improvements everywhere and all the time. Nextcloud wouldn't be the same without it. Here on the screen, you can see yet another example. Yeah, so there are tons of really cool community apps for Nextcloud. And sometimes these apps are really becoming important for Nextcloud to the point that they become part of Nextcloud Hub itself. So a big example from quite many years ago is external storage, which started its life as a community app and of course became a part of Nextcloud itself. But more recently, we had the Collectives app, which is a knowledge management app that was developed by a couple of volunteers, also with some help from the German government. And, you know, we well, hired them and made the app part of Nextcloud Hub because it was just a functionality a lot of our users and customers needed. Uh, kind of a smaller example, but I think also impactful, is a right-click menu in files. This was for a long time also an app and has become part of Nextcloud Hub itself. And now... We integrated the Share Renamer app, and here on the screenshot, you see the maintainer sharing the news of this. I see thousands of servers were using this app already. Can you explain what it does? Yes. So what the app does is, like, when you create a public share link, you get this link with a bunch of random characters at the end. And, well, with this change, you will be able to change this random set of characters to something more, well, sensible. More well, sensible. Yes, is this really sensible? But well, I'll leave that up to you. But anyway, it's a cool new feature for home users. You can share holiday photos with a logically sounding link or to you logically sounding. However, these links are much easier to guess, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's a bit of the downside here. There's in the end a trade-off. I mean, if you call, you know, your the link that you sent to your family with holiday photos, like Mallorca underscore 2019, and, you know, they know that you went to Mallorca in 2020, then they can probably guess what the link will be for next year. And of course, if there were friends that maybe you unfriended or don't want to share the pictures with, um, yeah, now you have quite a guessable link. Now, I still think for most home users, this is quite helpful, but it is still off by default um, because especially in the business, of course, this could get risky with like important data ending up on guessable URLs. And yeah, you don't want that to be floating around. 